Hey YouTube, I'm Gone Boondocking. I've come to bring you a new video that I hope will bring value to your lives. Okay, let's get the show on the road. Hey YouTube, I'm back. Today I plan on taking you through the very basics of my solar system. I plan on doing a much more comprehensive video in the future explaining the pros and the cons of the different battery types, solar panel types, inverters, charge controllers. But today I just wanted to show you what I use in order to be able to turn my RV into an all-electric uh, uh, RV in, uh, for the future. Uh, I plan on installing uh, several different appliances and stuff and, and practically getting rid of the entire propane system. Now, isn't this beautiful? This is why I tell you there's plenty of room out here. This is Colorado Mountains. We're about 6,400 feet. Oh, excuse me, 8,400 feet in elevation. And the weather is never hot. Absolutely perfect place to boondock. Okay, campers. These are my solar panels on the roof. What I have is eight great solar 180 watt panels. I have uh, four parallel circuits with two panels in series in each circuit. This seems to best be the best configuration for me. That way I would be able to know if I start losing efficiency on any particular panel. Now, as you can see, I've mounted the solar panels on two inch by two inch by eighth inch aluminum angles. Right there. You can see the aluminum rails down each side of the solar panel. I then use two inch wide double stick Eternabond tape to adhere the aluminum channel to the roof. This means that there are no holes in this roof for the entire solar system. I have installed several solar systems on several different RVs and there's never been a failure nor has a solar panel come even slightly loose. This Eternabond tape is quite waterproof and a very strong adhesive. I drilled holes through both the aluminum angles and the solar panels, and I used rivets to fasten them together. This is because had I used bolts, then I would not have been able to back up the bolt with a nut behind it. Doing it this way, I can simply install the rivets very quickly and very easily, and should I ever need to remove one of the solar panels, I could simply drill out, drill out the rivet. I riveted the aluminum angles to the solar panels on the ground, then I stuck the eternal bond tape to the bottom of the aluminum angles and then brought them up to the roof and adhered them in place. Now you can see how they are arranged in nice straight lines, plus I still have room on both sides of the panel to be able to walk all the way to the front if I ever need to do any work on that end of the roof. Maybe you notice what is missing up here is the rooftop air conditioner. In fact, I've also taken the refrigerator rooftop vent off along with the TV antenna. The reason for that is that it gives me one large piece of real estate in order to install all the panels and in an orderly fashion. Having these panels in this configuration has much less wind load on the panels going down the road. Maybe you've also noticed that I still have an empty space behind the middle roll of panels as well as a couple of empty spaces here, back here where I'm sitting. This is for a future upgrade where I'm going to install two foot by two foot solar water heat panels, but more on that later. One other thing to mention since I'm here is that when I did take the air conditioner off the roof, I ordered 16 inch by 16 inch by eighth inch thick aluminum plates to cover the hole where the air conditioner was. I also removed one of the max fan air vents that was right behind and underneath the middle solar panel. 
and so I covered both of the 14 by 14 holes with aluminum plates. On the inside I used UHMW sheet material to cover the inside of the holes. I also installed aluminum plate where the refrigerator vent was on the roof as well as an aluminum plate over where the TV antenna was. Okay, now I'm going to show you the batteries I have for the solar system. These are six Battleborn 12 volt lithium ion phosphate 100 amp hour batteries wired in parallel. Four of them are mounted here behind the recliners and the other two are mounted below the entrance step. Now this may seem like too much for what I'm using considering my regular electrical needs plus the heat pump but later on I plan to install a two burner induction cooktop along with a convection microwave half time oven. By the way that cooktop and oven will perfectly replace the existing oven in an RV. Use these two resettable circuit breakers so I can simply push a button and disconnect my entire solar array from the charge controller or the batteries. I also installed a 400 amp fuse with a shunt to isolate the batteries from the inverter. This way everything is protected from the solar array to the inverter. This is the solar charge controller. It's a Victron MPPT 150 volt 100 amp charge controller with Bluetooth. I'll be uh, putting the links to the, the Victron appliances in the comments below. The Victron inverter charger, right here, can produce 3,000 watts at 120 volts. It's also a smart charger for the lithium batteries whenever I'm plugged into shore power. Okay. And this is the Victron smart dongle. This gives the inverter the capability of having Bluetooth. On top of the inverter, I've placed a, the MK3 to USB Victron interface. You must have this to be able to custom program the inverter for lithium ion batteries. In this system, every part of the system can be monitored on Bluetooth. I can monitor the batteries, the state of the inverter, and the state of the solar charge controller from my smartphone through the Victron app. The battery cables are all welding cables. I used a hydraulic ram to connect the lugs to the cables. I also converted, covered the lugs with double thick shrink wrap to protect the cables from short circuits. It is important to have good heavy duty cables throughout the system and to make tight connections on all the solar components. One of the things that's really nice about the Battleborn lithium ion phosphate batteries is their terminals that allows you to use a bolt and nut so that you can tightly torque them down without ever having to worry about damaging the batteries. If the bolt ever becomes damaged, you can simply replace the bolts and the battery remains undamaged. I also have a battery temperature sensor so that the battle, you know, so that the charge controller and the inverter can regulate the correct charging profile. I recommend the Battleborn batteries because they are made in America and they have a 10 year warranty. Also, Battleborn already has online videos to explain how to set up the charging profile for lithium ion phosphate batteries. Well, okay, I hope you enjoyed the video of my solar system. Of course, this is what I believe is best for my electrical needs, which may not necessarily be the best choice for everybody else. However, if you plan on doing something like what I did uh, to operate a mini split, uh, induction cooktop, convection microwave, pressure washer, entirely upon solar power, then this may be the system for you. I fully understand that this system is on the expensive side but I consider my solar system to be an investment which I could fully expect to last 15 to 20 years without further upgrades. In that way, I believe the cost of my solar system is much more affordable when spread out over such a long period of time. In the future, I can explain the cost-benefit analysis of actual watt-hours per dollar for a lithium-ion solar system 
versus other types of uh, solar systems and why it is by far the most cost-effective solution in the long term. Uh, just uh, uh, on a second note, uh, I appreciate uh, your watching the videos and everything. Uh, understand that I'm, I'm still very, very new at this and, and I do recognize that my videos are, fall far short in the, uh, in the professional category. My, but still my hope is to bring you some information to make your lives better. You know, later on, you know, I fully expect I get better and better at this. I'm already seeing some improvement already. But just want you to know that, that this is more for you than for me. I could just wait for a year and really get good at videography before I start posting videos. But I think that that may be too late for some people. You know, uh, just so you know, I still got uh, 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 several other videos to show you. Some are more important than others, but in the long run, you know, you should be able to stay unplugged out in nature, or at the very least, not have to get you know, you know, go in search of uh, of utilities on a continual basis. Once we get all of these improvements out to you, okay, uh, you have a very good day. Thank you again for watching my videos. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. I want to thank you for watching every one of my videos. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my very best to answer them as quickly as possible. There's always room for one more out here. I'll see you then. I'm gone, Boondocky. Thank you.